On the show in wheel spin, we drive the TUV 300 from Mahindra. On the track, we bring you the action from the Jeketa National Racing Championship. Quicker car presents the auto guide. And on the road, we drive the Fiat Punto Evo to Alwar. What you see here is the latest from Mahindra, the TUV 300. And when I had first heard about this project, I thought Mahindra is getting into the business of making battle tanks rather than cars because the name TUV 300 sounds like the name of a battle tank. And now that I have met the Mahindra guys, I know that the inspiration for this car actually came from a battle tank. They wanted something which is tough, which will go anywhere and of course practical. And the brief for this car was just this. So the first letter of the name TUV stands for tough and the 300 is of course the series just like the XUV 500. The TUV 300 sits on a new platform although it shares the engine and some of the components with other Mahindra products. But the positioning as well as the design is new and with the launch of the TUV 300 the company plans to target a new segment in the Indian market. One look at this TUV 300 and you know that she is an unmistakable part of the Mahindra family. And when I say this, I do not necessarily mean this in a very complimentary sort of a way because Mahindra vehicles have ranged from being downright ugly to just about acceptable. But having said this, I must say that this TUV 300 here is easily the best looking Mahindra on Indian roads. She still looks a bit boxy and a bit overdone in the macho sort of a way but overall if you look at the proportions she fills in quite nicely and looks quite nice when she's on the move in fact you would not complain too much in terms of the proportions the good part is that she measures in at just under four meters which in turn means that she is eligible for tax subsidies which again means that she should be reasonably priced so it's time to see what kind of fill she offers and the space inside Although there are lots of hatchbacks as well as sedans which have been literally cut short to comply with the sub 4 meter regulation and to make them more price competitive. However, the SUV segment which is now rapidly growing has hardly any attractive products in this category. So the TUV 300 does stand a chance of catching the fancy of all those who don't want a big size or a huge price tag. And this is where the TUV 300 might have a big advantage. If the brief of the designers of this car was to make this car a practical car, then I must say they have adequately succeeded. Because the moment you step inside here, you see that you will never be short of storage space here. There's a bottle holder here, there's space for a bottle holder here, plenty of cubby holes, a scooped out fascia here for keeping your knickknacks. There's a 12 volt socket here and over here too. The glove box is big. So if you are on a long drive with this car, then you will never be short of storage space. Even the seat has under seat storing. And you have things like this armrest, which you will not see in any car in this segment. So overall, this car should be really comfortable to use on a long drive. To add to the practicality factor, the TUV 300 also comes with two extra seats, which actually look better than just a bare jump seat to make it into a seven-seater. But the good part is that the mid and the top end will also come with foldable rear seats to enhance the luggage carrying capacity from 400 liters to 720 liters. And this should really come in handy while moving houses. The second thing I like about the interiors of this car is that she is now offering something which is one step above what you can expect in a Mahindra car priced at this range. She gives you pretty much everything including the aesthetics. The dual tone fascia looks quite good, the seats are tastefully done but mind you you'll not get a dual tone fascia in the base trim but overall she has everything including a display. The engine that you are going to get in this TUV 300 is pretty much the same engine that you get in other Mahindra products. It's the same 1.5 litre common rail diesel engine. Of course, as to be expected for a new car, it has been retuned, remapped and of course worked on. 
and the main area where it has been worked on is in terms of reducing the weight and reducing the friction. The result is increased fuel efficiency. In this QV300, you get a nice fuel efficiency of over 18 kilometers to a liter. And this is something which is bound to help a small compact SUV like this QV300 because in this segment, buyers are really conscious about the fuel consumption and keeping the cost down. And this should be a big USB for the engine here and for this car as well. But where this TUV 300 has lost out is in terms of the power as well as the torque output. You only get 230 Newton meters and you get a measly 84 brake horsepower. And I think most drivers here will find this a little underpowered. It doesn't really have the grunt that you'd expect from a common rail diesel engine and especially the engines that Mahindra have been making so far. In fact, it feels a bit sluggish and if you are into the business of getting to the 100 kilometer mark in the fastest time possible, I'm sure you're going to be disappointed. But having said this, I must also say that the engine here is quite well behaved. Firstly, you do not notice a big turbo lag. The power delivery is quite linear, but of course, being a diesel engine, it peaks off around the 4,500 RPM. So you will have to keep on changing the gears, especially if you are caught in city traffic. But Mahindra has a solution for that as well. They are going to offer you a five-speed automatic manual transmission or the AMT, which should solve the hassle of frequent gear changing and make life much more easy, especially in our crowded city conditions. And this, I think, is a very good option which Mahindra is offering their customers. What I drive in this car here is of course the 5-speed manual gearbox. No complaints about that, slots in quite well, small short throws, but of course it will not give you the convenience of an empty box. The TUV 300 rides on 15-inch wheels and you will get alloys on the top trims and for the front suspension uses double wishbones. While as for the rear, it uses a multi-link setup with stabilizer bars to give it the stability it needs around corners. And the TUV 300 does grip the road well and corners quite confidently. And as far as the ride and handling goes, I think this car is quite sorted out. Of course, many of you will find it being a little stiffer especially if you hit the potholes but then keep in mind she is designed like a cheap not like a premium sedan so you are bound to get somewhat of the potholes coming into your cabin and jarring you a bit especially if you're on a bad stretch of road but i think the good part is that she comes with ample ground clearance of 190 millimeters which should enable you to go pretty much anywhere but the bad side is that she doesn't come with a four-wheel drive. The company at this point has no plans to offer you a 4x4. The TUV 300 will also come with an eco drive mode, which will help in terms of increasing the fuel efficiency during city driving cycle. And armed with micro-hybrid technology, will switch off the engine during idling. And the two-stage turbocharger also helps to cut down on the turbo lag. The instrumentation here is a bit cluttered, it's really tight, but then she's a small car and the amount of information they have put here on this display is actually quite a lot for a car like this. So overall what you will find in this car is convenience and practicality and all this blended very nicely with aesthetics. The steering wheel does come with multifunction buttons, but what you will not get is a leather wrapped steering even on the top variant. And in terms of the infotainment system, it does offer you quite a bit, as you can sync it with your smartphone. Right in the beginning, I said that the TUV 300 looks like an unmistakable member of the Mahindra family. And in case you were about to forget that after having got inside the car, you'll remember it the moment you see the electric power window switches here. It's completely eccentric positioning of these switches here. You don't find them here on the door pod, but here 
you find it in this place and it's a bit inconvenient you have to actually look for it it's not very ergonomic but then it's very mahindra But what really makes me happy is the attention paid to safety. So much so that even the base variant will give you an option to buy the car with dual airbags. And that's something which is indeed very welcome. The top end will also get ABS and EVD. The TUV 300, however funny that name sounds, is a car which I feel will add great value to the Mahindra range of cars here. As well as to all the buyers who are looking for a compact SUV because she does manage to take most of the boxes. She has enough space. In terms of the feature list, she is quite impressive. The only area where she falls short is in terms of drivability because the engine is somewhat underpowered. But then if you are not too much of a keen driver, I think you will be okay with that. So overall, the package really works. The TUV 300 will be sold in seven variants and the prices start at rupees 6.9 lakhs and goes all the way to rupees 9.12 lakhs ex showroom Delhi, which we feel is a bit steep considering the fact that the TUV 300 is a compact sub 4 meter SUV. But the good part is that the company will offer you three years 100,000 kilometer warranty to ensure your peace of mind. And this is something which even some of the top-end luxury car manufacturers are not offering. First round of the 18 JK Tire National Racing Championship saw some intense action even on the final races of day two. The fastest race of the day was the JK Racing India Series race in which BMW powered cars hit speeds of over 200 kilometers on the straights. And the race was intensely competitive. Akhil Ravindra, who in race two early in the day had to suffer a 10 second penalty for a jump start, which forced him to finish third in spite of leading the race. But in this final race, he was in no mood to relent. Starting from the fourth place in this final race, he soon made his way past the others to lead it. And it was a fight from start to finish as Sandeep, Akhil, and Vishnu fought bumper to bumper for 15 laps. Eventually, it was Akhil Ravindra who took the podium, followed by Vishnu in second place and international driver Constantino Peroni from Italy, who paced his way to a third place finish. The Volkswagen Ventos, which had replaced the Polos for this year's championship, provided action in plenty as 22 drivers lined up on the starting grid. And as the lights turned green, there was plenty of passing and overtaking even before the cars had reached the first corner. This was the final race of the first round of the JK Tire Volkswagen Vento Cup and it was the local lad, Vigneshwar Devarajan from Coimbatore who started off from pole position and was followed by 21 cars on the track. But it was Karminder Singh from New Delhi who soon took the lead after having started from the sixth position on the grid. And it was a pleasure to watch Karminder drive a near flawless race on a twisty, winding Curry Motor Speedway in Coimbatore. As he managed to hold on to his lead and eventually took the top step of the podium. Anindit Reddy Konda from Hyderabad and Sahil Gauri from New Delhi with the other two who shared the podium with Karminder to finish as winners of round one of the 18th JK Tire National Racing Championship. Bhoval from Kolkata writes in, he wants to buy a second-hand bike online. 
Saurabh the Quicker app has sellers selling not just cars but bikes as well. Go to the Quicker app, click on the icon and browse through a range of bikes. From a Bajaj Pulsar to a Harley Davidson. Bikes ranging from 10,000 rupees to 7 lakh rupees. Not only are there lakhs of bikes listed, you can in fact choose the one which is in great shape in spite of being pre-used. All you need to do is look out for the quicker inspection report. Once you shortlist, do use Quicker's MSP calculator to decide the price and negotiate scientifically to get the best deal. Today, I'm headed out from Delhi to set off on an extended road trip to some of the lesser known parts of Rajasthan in the gorgeous Fiat Punto Evo. Now, every little town in Rajasthan practically has beautiful architectural gems on offer and I'm hoping to stumble upon some of those lesser known ones off the beaten path over the next few episodes. I'm also really looking forward to getting to know the Fiat Punto Evo and for starters I'm headed to Alwar. Let's get behind the wheel. Alwar is perhaps the oldest of the Rajasthani kingdoms, forming part of the Matsya territories of Viratnagar in 1500 BC. It came to prominence again in the 18th century under Pratap Singh. It was one of the first Rajput states to ally itself with the British Empire. Located around 180 kilometers from Delhi in the heart of the Aravali Hills, Alwar makes for an excellent weekend holiday destination because it provides a great combination of natural beauty and historical monuments and it takes under five hours to get there. The variant of the Fiat Punto Evo that I'm driving today is the 1.3 litre diesel and it turns out 93 PS which is pretty powerful for a car this size. It's also extremely smooth and comfortable and has high ground clearance. So all in all, I'm already impressed with its drivability. City Palace Complex in Alwar and it's a sprawling complex that's been largely converted into government offices so it can feel a bit like you're navigating a labyrinth as you try to find all the hidden treasures here. Now there's the Alwar Museum which is this little museum that's incredible though. It has a collection that boasts taxidermy animals, weapons, miniature paintings, royal textiles, it's really really beautiful. But there's also much more within the complex as the Musi Rani Ki Chhatri which I'm also going to visit. It's really, really an interesting place with lots to see. So it's a must visit if you're in Alwar. As you meander through the city palace complex to get to the Alwar Museum, you arrive at a beautiful central courtyard with a good view of Bala Kila, Alwar's main fort, which overlooks the town. Access to Bala Kila is restricted as it houses a radio transmitter station but it sure has its place in the history books. Mughal emperors Babur and Akbar have stayed overnight here and Prince Salim, later Emperor Jahangir, was exiled in Salim Mahal for three years. I managed to find the Alwar Museum and its eclectic exhibits are certainly worth the treasure hunt through the maze that is the city palace. The displays evoke the extravagance of the Maharaja's lifestyle. Stunning weapons, taxidermy animals, ancient stone sculptures, Mughal miniatures. There's lots to see here.
Behind the city palace is a cenotaph of the most famous king and his queen of the erstwhile royal family of Alwar. Known as Musi Rani Ki Chhatri, it is apparently a lovely monument and devoid of crowds. Let's go see what it's like. I'm at Musi Rani Ki Chhatri, the cenotaph of Maharaj Bhaktawar Singh. But it gets its name because his mistress at the time actually lit herself on fire on his funeral pyre in the practice of sati that was common at the time. And I shudder to think of the extent that women had to go to to prove their love. But it certainly is a beautiful monument and below it is a lake or rather a little pond which is behind me. We're also close to a local temple and it's in full bhajan mode right now so you might be able to hear some of the festivities and music behind me. But let's take a look around the cenotaph now. This double-story edifice, resting on a platform of sandstone, was built in 1815 by Maharaja Vinay Singh in memory of his father Bhaktawar. It overlooks a serene pond which makes for a beautiful view. The Fiat Punto Evo has lots of leg room so you can comfortably stretch your legs on a long drive. There's also very efficient cooling, there's front and rear AC vents which ensures even cooling. In fact, there's even a pull down holder at the back for a beverage right in front of the rear AC vent so you can keep your water or soft drink cool on your journey. And the sound system is fantastic, it also has blue and me connectivity which is very convenient. All in all, it really has pretty much everything you can desire on a road trip. Let's get going. After taking in all those architectural monuments, I was in the mood for some natural beauty. So I've driven around 15 kilometers away from the town center to the gorgeous Silicer Lake. And this place is truly picturesque. There's a soft breeze blowing, the water rambles along the hills, and there's even migratory birds here. It's absolutely gorgeous. The Silicer Lake was built on the orders of Maharaja Vinay Singh in the year 1848 AD. The beautiful lake, circumscribed by the slopes of the Aravalis, was dedicated by the king to his queen Sheila. It's almost time for me to leave Alwar, so I thought I'd take a few moments to just relax and really relish the beautiful place that I'm at right now. Silicer Lake really is magnificent. The water just shimmers. It's so cool here compared to the other parts of the place. And the views are truly breathtaking. I've had such a wonderful trip to Alwar. I've gotten to acquaint myself with the history and heritage of the place by visiting the city palace and the Alwar Museum and I've also gotten to witness some of its most beautiful natural environment by visiting the Silicer Lake. It's truly been a fulfilling trip and all the more so because I've had the Fiat Punto Evo at my disposal. It's a car that's sturdy and luxurious at the same time. It's compact and yet easy to maneuver. It's super comfortable. It's really full of conveniences, including extra storage space. It's been the ideal car for this road trip. And I'm excited that I actually get to set off on a few more trips discovering Rajasthan further over the next few episodes. So thanks so much for tuning in today and I hope to see you again next week.